Do you have change for a quarter? Oh, yeah. Yeah? You do not say yeah to an officer. An officer is always addressed as sir. Now, I learned that in basic training private, and so did you. You always address an officer as sir. Now, I'm going to give you one more chance, and I want to hear that sir loud and clear. Private, do you have change for a quarter? No, sir! <laughs> took one look at my face and read out an order to Barbie. I said, Foxtrot, Tango, Alpha. Read the army. I think I'm going to get me a watchdog. What you need a watchdog for, Sarge? You're surrounded by 250 armed men. That's why I'm going to get me a watchdog. <laughs> No Vietnamese ever ordered me to fight. They never flew over my hometown to bomb me. So I have to say, Foxtrot, Tango, Alpha, free the army. Mr. President, there's a terrible demonstration going on outside. Oh, there's always a demonstration going on outside, Pat. Yeah, but Richard, this one is completely out of control. Well, what are they asking for this time? Free Angela Davis and all political prisoners out of Vietnam now and draft all government officials. Oh, well, uh, we have people to take care of that. They'll do their job, you do your job, and I'll do my job. Well, Richard, you don't understand. They're storming the White House. Oh, in that case, I better call out the 3rd Marines. You can't, Richard. Why not? It is the 3rd Marines. Oh. <laughs> Down to the base, they're going to look at my face and read out an order to bar me. So we said, Fox Trump, Tango, Alpha. I went into the Army, I thought it was, well, since I had the opportunity to grow up in a free society, as in America, I owed my country at least two or three years from my life. So I enlisted and uh, was sent over to Vietnam, spent four months there in 1970 before I was uh, hit three times, was medevaced out to Japan. And at the time of uh, recuperating in Japan, I started wondering just what the hell we're in Vietnam for, is when you're taught about the communist monster that you're over there to uh, defeat. And when you get over there and uh, you like see when you're going through a villa or something to liberate a village, the people hide from you and throw rocks and everything else, bottles and all at you. But when the Viet Cong come to liberate the village, people go out there yelling, celebrating, uh, holding pictures of Ho Chi Minh. And you know, seeing things like this makes you wonder just who this monster really is. First they draft your ass, they uniform your ass, and then they train your ass, I mean they drill your ass, and then they bust your ass, and then they brig your ass, and then they ship your ass, and then they shoot your ass, well they can kiss my ass, and they can kiss my ass. My ass is mine, 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 that's why I'm feeling super fine, that's why I'm feeling super fine, even when my ass is on the line, even when my ass is on the line, and that's why I'm smiling all the time, that's why I'm smiling all the time, because I know that no, I know my ass is mine. You know that might sound a little bit selfish, just like a synonym for selling out, but that depends on what your ass is doing and what your ass is all about. If you save your ass by keeping silent about the murder across the sea, if I was Vietnamese and you did that, I'd say your ass belongs to me, but my ass is mine. My ass is mine. Echo, my ass is mine. My ass is mine. That's why I'm smiling all the time. Even when my ass is on the line. That's why I'm feeling super fine. Because I know they know I know my ass is mine. She had a 
had a job, she had a boss, he had a desk to run her round. She thought that she could escape that job by escaping her job hometown. She sailed clear across the ocean, but baby, now she's really in a mess. You see, she gave her commanding officer a karate chop in the chest. And now she's telling the whole world. She's her own woman, not your girl. And since the very first time she fell free, she said, I know they know my ass belongs to me. You know, some say the masses are asses, but I've just come here to tell you they're all wrong. You see, the masses have just been letting the asses lead them by the nose too long. We've been busting our ass all evening, and now I'm saying just for me that my ass belongs to everyone who's fighting to be free. Yes, my ass is mine. My ass is mine. Come on. My ass is mine. It's my ass I've, ass I've got to lose Where I'll be losing it, I will choose And since the first time I fell free I said, I know they know, I know my ass belongs to me First they draft your ass A uniform your ass And then they drill your ass I mean, they train your ass Then they bust your ass And then they brig your ass And then they ship your ass And then they shoot your ass Well, they can kiss my ass And 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 they can kiss my ass aircraft carrier USS Coral Sea with 85 planes, 6 million pounds of munitions, 4,500 men. It has dropped more than 850,000 tons of bombs on the people of Indochina. In November 1971, 1,300 of its crew signed a petition to stop their ship from going to Vietnam. You all are not actually on Vietnamese soil. It must be very abstract for you. I mean, what the effects of an attack carrier have on the war. Um, what is it that, that started you all thinking? And, and how did you come to understand the role that an attack carrier plays? I suppose everybody always knows, but they, they can rationalize anything away. That's man's, you know, that's the way his mind works. Like you read the polls and people want us to get out of Vietnam and you see the polls getting higher and higher every week, but yet we aren't out, you know, and how can you rationalize this? Yeah, we'll be off the coast of Vietnam during Christmas, you know. We'll probably send a strike off during Christmas Day and uh, so many sick lifers. They'll go down and, and write Merry Christmas on a bomb, you know. And the chaplain will make, uh, we'll try and rationalize it, you know, and it's a big joke, but it scares you. You have to question, and I was always taught to question. And the service won't let you question because they don't have an answer. They only have a rule book. And I feel that by my speaking out, you know, if I can turn just a couple people to start yeah. thinking about it, or even, even think about it for a couple of seconds, yeah. I've done what I've, right. I'm supposed to do. Johnny afternoon here on the Mekong River Delta, where elements of the 101st Airborne tangle with a crack North Vietnamese 7th Regiment. Both teams undefeated and untied so far this season. <laughs> We're looking directly down on the playing area, marshy white paddies surrounded by trees with hills in the background. Looking up over those hills, 
Here come the Cobra helicopters of the 101st. They're strafing the landing zone with 50-caliber machine gun fire. There go the miniguns. And here come the troop-carrying Hueys windmilling down into the zone. It'll be the 3rd Brigade of the 101st. The boys come busting out of the helicopters, firing M-16s from the hip as they go, driving on to set up the line of scrimmage. There's no sign of the Viet Cong yet, no sign of Charlie. Wait a minute, there. Yeah, there he is. There's Charlie. Charlie's here, and he's got mortars. I count mortars. One, two, three, four, five rounds of mortar fire, and two make it four. Huey helicopters down and burning. The rest are up and heading for home. <laughs> the boys in the 101st are dug in there. Now, Charlie coming out from behind the mortars with AK-47s. He's heading for the outside of the line, but the boys in the 101st have laid up a wall of grenades, small weapons, and machine gun fire. But Charlie driving on hard, and look at those fireworks. The best that American technological know-how can provide. Flashettes, claymores, beehives. There's Pop the Magic Dragon, 36,000 rounds a minute. The boys have got four-barrel shotguns. And Charlie is slowing down. He's bogged down. He stopped. He stopped. He stopped. At the line of scrimmage. What do you think of the action so far, Red? Well, Red, looks like we're in for a beautiful game here today. <laughs> Both these teams are in tip-top condition, boys. None the first looking really good out there. Not that I'm trying to detract from the Viet Cong. They've had a beautiful season. I guess you know this, Red. They are the home team here. And they seem to have a lot of support here among the local fans. <laughs> Thank you, Red. For that interesting and colorful commentary, meanwhile, back on the playing field, there's a temporary halt in the action, a timeout, while the dead and wounded are being dragged from the playing area. Red, I see Lieutenant Colonel Billy Slocum on the radio down there, and I think he's going to go to the air for the next play. I think he'll look for the bomb. Here they are, from the carrier, USS Enterprise, four F Phantom Jets in formation. Silver glitting in the sunlight. They're up and over, down they come. There go the 20-millimeter cannons. There go the rocket pods. There go the anti-personnel fragmentation bombs, and I count... 12, water buffalo down and kicking. <laughs> there they go, around again. They're coming in again for a second pass. We'll watch for it. Here they come. Low coming in. Here it is. It's Napa. Wow. Right on top of the 101st. There are penalty flags all over the playing area. They're moving out now into orderly withdrawal and lying motionless on the ground is Lieutenant Colonel Billy Slocum. That'll be a fragment.